Well, today I've been asked by Stuart if I cover the Fidelity 2001. That's a nice batting example, isn't it? I bought this at a radio rally for two pounds. I thought this would be a good one for spares. Lights up, no channel display, no nothing. Audio chip missing. The trouble is we had a half a dozen of these in for repair over the weekend and one of the other engineers here has gone and fixed them all, which of course is the job. But then we hadn't got a decent one. So I'm going to open this up and just see whether... Oh, anything can be done with it. And that's full of that's been full of water. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, I'm going to give this a go, for, especially for this demonstration. We have a chemical cleaner here. Another service oil product. Isopropyl alcohol. brush some of this onto the circuits when I go and look for my brush and then I'll look at it more carefully and see if there's any permanent damage after I've done this notice how the label didn't say has been for a swim in the swimming pool without its aqualung no it didn't say that I was once called by the police in, now where was it, Derbyshire, they would apprehended somebody who they thought was listening into their radio system using a radio scanner and acting on the information and when they chased him he threw his scanner in the river. My job was to set up equipment at the police station try and make the scanner work and then see what the channels were which were programmed into it unfortunately quite a time had passed between the person being apprehended and uh, and me sorting the scanner out you know like three months so um, it was in a bit of a state I'll tell you what, I got it working, and out of its hundred memories, I recognised 90-something of them as being police channels. It was actually the defence who were paying me, so that didn't work out for them, did it? Well, doesn't that look better? Man, the set doesn't look better. Now, we've got a power lead for this. Um, I'll just pause the video, and we'll have to make up a mic. Well, I went to make up a mic, and we haven't got any more mics, so I'm said to be getting through about 30 a week at the moment. So I'm stored some more from the wholesaler. So I've dug out an old mic, which hopefully will fit. Now this uh, connector's corroded because um, I've got a fiberglass brush here, so we'll see whether we can deal with that as well. Fiberglass brush needs a new insert, which we do have in stock, but it's another job, isn't it? Right, we'll plug it in. Oh, 
the right about no display. They're right about the audio chip missing, but what they didn't say is the heat sink's missing as well. <laughs> bothered about parts, it's bothered about things like heat sinks. Oh, of course the mic plug's been underwater as well, so back with the fiberglass brush. Right, I'll look into this and uh, we'll put the video on when I found some bits. Well, I was looking for a microphone that worked and I came across a new microphone which one of the other engineers has made up. So uh, that fits the bill. Now, I don't, I'm just sidetracking, I don't know whether any of you have seen one of these microphone testers. There's about three on the market. There's a Superstar one. And then there's the this one is from Palmer, who are a wholesaler in Manchester, to the um, two-way radio trade. And then there's one which is done by Midland Allen, and they're very useful. I've got two of these different ones that we have the Superstar one and the Palmer one here, and um, we've got adapter leads for some of the mics not included and some of the business radio um, leads. So if I plug this into the Maxon Stroke Midland Stroke Cybernet socket and switch it on. We've got the receive light to prove that we've got the receive circuit there. We've got the, we've got the transmit light, uh, light there and one two one two while I want to. So you can test these things. Useful to have. We don't deal with Palmer um, so but we did at one time hence we bought that. Now back to this radio, what we're going to do for a start, I've put the audio IC in, i found a scrap Amstrad chassis, which has been, when I find it to show you, where have I put that? It's, it's been on mains, some people are so stupid that they think that the, the power lead, you plug into a mains uh, supply, so it's had 240 volts up it, and of course that was the end of that set. And um, so what I've been able to do is to pinch the heat sink off that and then put a new audio IC on it. Obviously wasn't going to be using the audio IC which had been on the mains. So what we're going to do first is to try and get this radio to work in public address mode. Because this, you know it's in such a state, I wouldn't contemplate this for a customer, but as this is a, a scrap chassis as you saw we bought in. And to do this demonstration, uh, we're going to have to just use it or try to use it. So I'm in public address mode. One two, one two, one two, one two. Well, I'll tell you what, you see that radio now works in public address mode, so we're getting somewhere. And that proves that quite a few of the circuits are working. Uh, I think we'll just clean up that volume control. So with the circuit diagram in front of me, and I'm using the Amstrad 901 circuit because uh, I can't find a fidelity manual, at the moment. I should on receive have the FM hiss and I haven't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just check the voltage of the LA1230 which is the IF subsystem. And according to the circuit on pin 11 we should have full rail voltage. We have, we've got 13.6 volts. Now to my mind I can't think of a reason therefore why we shouldn't have an, F an FM hiss coming from this radio. I therefore suspect straight away that the LA1230 is faulty. Now it's quite possible that this radio has been 24 volted. So it might be that every IC or it's been reverse polarity. I also notice there's no polarity protection diode. So it's been reverse polarity. Everything, every IC in it will have been destroyed. So 
we'll just plump for that and we'll swap it. Okay then, going back to uh, this Fidelity 2001, we're now greeted with a display and we're greeted with a receive. And so what we've done is to change the LA1230, which these days are quite priced, I think they're about £11. Now clearly that was short circuit because what it's done, it has been robbing the voltages from other parts of the circuit. Remember the display was out. So it's corrected all that by changing the one IC. So that now means the synthesizer's running. I thought we'll probably have lost the synthesizer chip, but remembering that runs at five volts, it's fed from another part of the circuit. So in one fell swoop, I've restored the public address, haven't I? That was the first point of port of call. With such a, a repair, with, with a radio in such a state, no FM hiss, I've plumped straight for the LA1230, and that's brought up most of the other parts of the circuit. Now, I'll just see whether it goes into transmit. And the answer is yes, it does indeed go into transmit. One, two, testing, one, two. There's the monitor receiver. Um, I won't tell you what power it's doing. Um, oh, it's doing, uh, doing nearly three watts. What I now will do is go through the VCO with you. I think what we'll do with this one, with it being quite an extensive repair, but it just goes to show what you can do with a set that has been in such a state. It's clearly been underwater. I can't clean that volume control. I'll just have to swap one off a scrap chassis. But um, And, of course, that's time consuming because you've got the on and off foot wires. Um, right, we'll go on to the VCO with this. One thing I've not mentioned is some radios have a floating chassis. So they can be used in either positive or negative earth radios. You can always check for continuity with your test meter to actually see that the chassis, I'll just turn the power off, that the chassis is actually connected to the negative. If I, oh, we're on continuity test there. Now, that coil can is going to be connected to the real chassis, the negative, the, the, the negative. The actual physical chassis sometimes can be floating, but in this case, it isn't. Now, if I connect one of these wires to my to the negative of the power lead, again we've got continuity, and we've got continuity. But you won't always get that because sometimes the floating chassis. So when you take these voltage readings. Sometimes you need to put a crocodile clip onto either the negative of the power lead as it comes in or even solder something onto one of the coil cans. Um, sometimes you think, well, why aren't I getting any of these voltages? And it's because it's got a floating chassis. So I will now see whether that will stay in that hole. We're on the 20 volt range of the meter. I'll just zoom out a little bit so we can see everything that's going on. And we'll now go for the VCO and on these radios the VCO alignment point is between capacitor 9 and ground and so capacitor 9 is this one here and it's the far pin of capacitor 9 in the center so we can see exactly what I'm doing here so capacitor 9 I've now put the test prod on that far connection of capacitor 9 which is the green mylar uh, device on this particular radio and what the manual says is to select channel 1 which we've now done and it says adjust transformer 1 to give two volts. Now transformer one, last time I looked, is that one there. And it says use a non-metallic tool. Well, hey, 
that's because it gives a false reading. I can't be bothered to get up and look for the uh, the other one, so we're going to use this. At the moment, I'm going to zoom out so you can see the meter. Slide it across again. So we've got 2.4, 2.45, and it says what we're looking for is 2 volts, so that's high. Now we know this radio is being messed with, obviously, so we'll just, I just moved that um, anti-clockwise, I'll just move it clockwise a fraction, it's dropping. Now I've got to adjust and uh, and watch. There we are, two volts. That's exactly what the manual says. That's exactly what we are looking for. And then we need to go into transmit, and we're looking for on channel one still two volts. OK, we've got a minus voltage, that's novel. And I've got all my cables in a twist here. And we're just CT1, which is the red trimmer there, for 2 volts. Which we've now got. Back to receive, we've got 2 volts on receive. Remember on channel 1, we've got now 2 volts-ish on transmit. Now, I'm going to go to channel 40. It doesn't tell you to do this in the manual. This is experience. And I'm going to check it's kind of under 4 volts ish. We've got 3.5 in receive and we've got 2.6 in transmit. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that is locked. So we've gone to the furthest away connection of capacitor 9 with, uh, with the test prod. And on channel 1, on receive we've adjusted coil T1 for 2 volts then we've gone into transmit and we've adjusted CT1 for 2 volts that is the VCO lot and we've got away very well with a set in this kind of state that it's actually working and as you can hear setting 1, 2, 3 beautifully coming through on the monitor receiver I'll go through the rest of the transmitter on another video. So we've just covered trying to get something out of this set and the VCO on the Cybernet PTBM 002AOX chassis as used in the Fidelity 2001 in this instance.